You're constantly being convinced that a new phone model from Apple and Google have the best camera. The phone body itself is looking more and more upscale and shiny, I'm sure. The screens are sharper and brighter. You see them at stores with super bright colors on the display. There are more services you can access on your phone, including exclusive entertainment and financial services like Google Pay and Apple Pay. It's amazing how so much is focused on marketing to make you believe that these devices are super cool. They sell 1.5 billion phones a year, so you can imagine the focus of the world on it. But these phones come with a high cost, both in actual financial terms and privacy. We're going to talk about the top five reasons why it's time to dump your Google and Apple phones and use an alternative. It's coming up. Stay tuned. Yes, I use a smartphone as well, so I'm not here to convince you to go to a flip phone, though for a while that was the only alternative. But we'll talk about options after we discuss the concerns about an Apple and Google phone. Before I do that, let me just remind you that I'm on the library platform, LBRY, and I post my videos there ahead of YouTube. I have a link in the description so you can join me there. Glad to be in the top 50 creators on library. A lot of you have had some concern about your phones, and it may be subtle little things that made you wonder why your phone knows so much more about you than you imagined. For example, I think it's particularly invasive if my phone says, you are five minutes to your destination. What destination? Your car is parked 200 feet away. How'd you know that? How does it know that? This is especially bothersome when you don't give any permissions for this. There are other little hints of trouble. I've told the story for a long time. Some investment company decided to track people that work for Tesla so they can check the employment statistics over time without talking to Tesla. So a company was hired to collect all the sold location data that apparently all your phones have provided to some advertising aggregator. This was then used to track the number of phones at the specific locations of the Tesla plant. Again, without your consent. The information was used to play the stock market. By knowing the employment trend, a third party outside of Tesla was able to get information on whether Tesla could meet the demand of cars. So it turned out that they increased employment by 30% or so over time based on the location data. Knowing this, that investment company profited in a big way during the quarterly earnings announcement. They had information that no one else had. These are a couple of pieces of information that we have experienced or seen in the press. But there are many things that a Google and Apple phone can do, despite their supposed focus on privacy and security. Marketing crap. Could your phones identify your presence at a protest? Could a phone be used to track your contacts either for COVID-19 contact tracing or contact tracing in general for any other reason? Could your phones be used to create a profile of everything about you, your behavior, your financial status, and your beliefs? And some people think I'm paranoid when there are actual multi-billion dollar corporations that collect this data and use it to control us. An example of such a company is Palantir. They're not collecting this data for fun and games with a valuation of over 100 billion. The side part is because of government contracts, that profiling data is combined with your real records in the possession of government like driver's licenses, tax records, health records, and so on. So they have a completely bigger picture about you. So just to make it clear to you why you don't want to be part of this, we will discuss the top five reasons why you don't want a Google and Apple phone. Number one, your phone is tied to your real identity. It's no secret that your phone knows who you are exactly. Think about it. 
You logged in with your Google ID or Apple ID. You paid with a credit card, which has the same name. Your phone is recorded to be at a particular location at night. You make purchases using Google Pay or Apple Pay. Now, you may think this unimportant, but if I know who actually owns the phone, every piece of data I collect will be indexed to that phone user. I will know that Jane Smith went to the supermarket four times during the week. I know that she likes to visit TJ Maxx and purchases there regularly. I can see that Target is a weekly spot as well. I can see that she goes to a particular church, picks up the kids at a particular private school, sees a particular kind of doctor. I can tell her financial status based on the neighborhood and types of activities. I can take this very far. This is just a starting point. But knowing who owns the phone is problem number one. And it is extremely hard to undo this once the phone is identified. This will come into play when mixing with other data collected from the phone, which I'll be discussing. So this itself is like a computer chip. Yes, we didn't embed a chip in the back of our head or in our hand but we carry an identification chip on our pockets or handbags. We can't live without this, and those entities involved in mass surveillance are very thrilled about these new habits. By the way, my phone here has never logged into Apple or Google. I nipped this problem in the bud immediately. You'll learn more about this later. Number two, your device has a fingerprint. Not only does Apple and Google have access to your personal information, including name and address, they also have access to some other unique identifiers on the phone, including what your carrier knows. Your SIM card on the phone has the IMZ, International Mobile Subscriber Identity, and IMEI, International Mobile Equipment Identity. These two pieces of information are tied to your real identity and available to entities beyond your cell phone carrier. And there are more identifiers, which is explained in a device fingerprinting video. The problem is that depending on the phone model, some of this data is also visible to third parties so they can collect a device fingerprint together with the account ID, the Google ID or Apple ID, and use it for other activities like advertising tracking. And that's a benign use of this, by the way. This can be used for other things. Now, fortunately, the newest version of Android has been blocking some of this data, but even last year's model would not be blocking it. The point is that this is another identifier to have more specific tracking attached to your identity. This is useful for discriminating between different members of your family, which often belong to the same Google or Apple ID. Number three, permissionless, 24-7 location tracking. Many of you actually think that your phone requires permission to track your location. But earlier, I gave you an example of your iOS phone telling you about your next destination based on your travel habits. So isn't that inconsistent? You can have blocked all location tracking for all apps, yet your phone is giving you information on where your car is parked. The reason is that location tracking permissions are for third-party apps. It prevents a third-party app from getting your location without your permission. However, Apple and Google are exempt. It doesn't stop these two companies from doing something called Wi-Fi scanning. They take your GPS position and then correlate it to the locations of Wi-Fi routers around you, and this is being sent to home base with your Google and Apple ID, of course. So they update their Wi-Fi triangulation database, which I explain in another video, Wi-Fi triangulation. This is how they're able to tell where everyone is. In the early stages of COVID-19, they actually were able to show how during spring break, tons of people were in Florida beaches, and then they show this data to the press. Now, how do they get this information? It should be obvious if you guys pay attention to what your phone does. For example, Find My Phone can find all your devices even without a GPS. Some things require permission, but when it comes to Apple and Google, they are exempt from this since they wrote the programs. Of course, they will not deny themselves this information. 
So we will be clear. If you have an Apple or Google phone, then they know exactly where every phone is. Your carrier also knows roughly where your phone is, by the way, if you have a phone service. But this is not as precise and can only pinpoint you within an area of cell towers. Apple and Google know where you are within six zucking feet. There's some lawsuit, by the way, with Google relating to this 24-7 permissionless tracking, so it's not a secret, but most people tend to ignore this. Number four, contact tracing. Now, if you're all thinking only of COVID-19 contact tracing, then you have to open up your minds here. All Apple and Google phones can collect data on contacts and send them to HQ. The contact tracing code was added to Google Android in May and then iOS 13.4. So if you updated your phone, you are now in possession of a contact tracing device, which alone is a reason to change the device. Yes, you do not have to participate in contact tracing, meaning Apple and Google don't have to inform you of anything. But clearly the mechanism is there to now put the Bluetooth in a hyperactive mode where it constantly looks for other Bluetooth devices in the area and will notate them somewhere. This is similar to what can be done on Wi-Fi using something called a Wi-Fi probe. So even external parties can actually record these transmissions and store it on their own databases. Your radio frequency devices, which include both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, emit an identifier that is unique to your phone. This identifier is the MAC address or media access control address. With a radio receiver, one can capture this data and it can even be used by hackers to disrupt the phone. Before the contact tracing updates from Apple and Google, Bluetooth was more passive. You had to proactively turn it on before it starts detecting devices. Usually you have to manually click on a pair button. But now something else is going on on the phone, which again is useful for device tracking. I've already mentioned in many videos how it's scary that hackers can capture a presence in a building just by capturing Wi-Fi probes when you enter a building entrance, perhaps matched to facial recognition. Now, Bluetooth data can be added to that database. Number five, capturing your financial data. Many of you have begun to use Google Pay and Apple Pay on your phones. So now you've decided that the convenience of a single device for handling your financial transactions is a good thing. But what have you done here? You've centralized your identity together with your locations and your activities together with all your financial transactions. Instead of this data being disjointed and spread over several companies with legal restrictions on distribution, you've enabled Apple and Google to observe more things about you. This idea of putting more and more of what I do in a centralized entity is absolutely scary and Orwellian. It is very hard to hide the truth about what you do when you're dealing with money. As they say, you put your money where your mouth is. In this case, Apple and Google will find out where your mouth is based on where you put your money. I can come up with 50 reasons why you shouldn't use an Apple or Google phone, but we'll stop here with the top five. So if I'm telling you to not use an Apple or Google phone, then what do you use? Well, fortunately, you don't have to completely avoid smartphones. One of the options that is available and very usable is to use an Android open source project phone, otherwise known as AOSP. An AOSP phone is an Android phone, but it contains only the open source portion of Android. The actual Google phones you get from manufacturers like Samsung, LG, Lenovo, Xiaomi, and so on, are actually Android AOSP, but delivered with additional programs from Google called GAPS or Google Apps. It is GAPS that makes it Google. So Android without GAPS has no connection with Google. Yet, there are no telemetry and hidden contacts going on between Google and the phone because these are easily verified in the open source of the project. There's no 24-7 location tracking since nothing there points to anything going on for locations. So that's what I do. I take a supported phone, one where the OEM allows the phone to be bootloader unlocked, and then you replace the Google Android with an original AOSP and don't add gaps. 
I will also add other tools to spoof your identity. I refer to this as a de-googled phone. When you do this, the five issues I mentioned above are mitigated or removed. And there are other positive side effects when you disconnect an Android phone from Google. Based on real experience, I can tell you that the battery life of a de-googled phone doubles. So my de-googled Motorola G7 Play is charged only once every 2.5 days instead of daily. You can see then that there's a lot of background tracking that is not occurring for battery life to double. This in itself is a non-techie way of determining that Google is doing a lot of stuff in the background. Also, a de-Google phone never gets a login, so there's never an identity tied to it. You don't use your credit card for an app store. You don't use Google Photos or Google Drive. A de-Google phone mostly runs like a normal Google Android, except that there are no standard apps from Google. Though I actually can install Waze on this. Most apps work, but some apps don't get notifications. 90% of the apps work like normal, so you don't have to take any special precautions. The phone is not identified with a specific person. In my de Google phones, we use a spoofer to create a one-time identity. Google service requests don't go directly to Google. So for non-techie people wanting some privacy, you have to look no further. If you're more techie, you can appreciate what's going on more but you don't have to do anything differently. I have videos on de-googling that goes into more in-depth explanation of, of the underpinnings of a successful de-googled phone. Like I explained, Aurora Store and Micro G. Not all phones can be successfully de-googled. We only do less than 10 models ourselves. And some phones purchased from carriers are locked and cannot be modified. By the way, there's no solution that can be provided for an iOS phone. Unfortunately, though some Android phones can be reflashed to AOSP, there's nothing you can do to an iPhone. But maybe you need to rethink paying that premium price for a phone that's designed to make you more dependent on it, so you place more of your data on it, and in iCloud. This is why in some way, the choice of an alternate phone has to be accompanied by some philosophical choices. In my case, I don't buy a phone for its cameras. Yes, there are utilitarian reasons for having a functional phone camera because you can record events and documents quickly. But I don't rely on a phone as an all-in-one device. My external cameras are better than an iPhone camera. This here is my gimbaled 4K video camera. It's a DJI Osmo Pocket. As you can see, it's very small and 4K. And here's my other handheld camera, a Canon G7X Mark II. Much better quality than an iPhone, but both of these devices are not connected to the internet and I can put the data elsewhere and they can fit it in my pocket, both of them. Well, I don't know at the same time, but at least separately. So, though we are being pushed to an all-in-one solution, remember it's a marketing ploy. A best-of-breed solution is often a better choice and you protect yourself from the risks of data collection. If you're interested in letting third parties know what happens in every minute of your life and you are cool with this, then I can't convince you and you can stick to your Apple and Google phone. Chances are you never got to this part of the video anyway because by now you've hit the dislike button. But if my comments ring a bell of concern, something that's been niggling at you as you've relied on your Apple and Google phone, then it's time to think of an alternative. For those of you who are very techy, you can learn about how to load AOSB without gaps on your phone, otherwise called de-googling as I said. You go to a site like XDA and they have instructions there. If you're not techie or don't have the time, I do sell certain brands of phones already de-googled on my store on Braxme. You'll find the link in the description. Everyone who's gotten these phones breathe a sigh of relief, people. And there's even a smile as you feel like you're beating the system. It's good not to feel tracked. Keep your contact tracing Apple and Google. I'll just wear a mask and wash my hands. 
If you like this video, I have so many more on the degoogling topic and Linux phones. Please subscribe so you can see more and don't forget to slam on that notification bell. Yes, slam it please. Be angry. Enough of this non-stop tracking. Thank you for watching.